Hey guys, Bayan here, how you're doing? So recently I've been working on something that is quite unique from Limbo Miniatures. They call it Metalhead. Uh, surely it's not a fancy name, but the model itself looks the part. Uh, this is a commission job which will serve as the box art of their Kickstarter campaign. All right, let's start with the basics. The kits I've got here are the very first ones that came out of the casting house. It consists of several nice resin parts, and the casting quality is decent, especially when you look closely at the skull face, which by the way is my favorite part of the whole thing. The eyes, of course, should glow red like terminators, so I drilled a passage beforehand for the wires and LEDs. Putting it together is really simple. For the sake of the demonstration, I only use white tag to assemble it. And before I know it, I can start painting. Normally, I use light grey primers, but for this subject, black ones are most ideal for the extensive metallic paint that will follow short after. For the metallic base, I use a mixture of dark exhaust and lighter steel tone. When applied thinly, I can get a very subtle and elegant metal finish that's shine but not over the top. You'll see what I mean in a second. Now it's what it looks like when those paints are dry. The reflections are so gorgeous that I wish I could just stop here and call it done. The scowl face is painted with gold wax paint. It gives me a nice satin kind of finish, but the downside is that I need to leave it for two days before I can put anything on top of it. So I will just leave it aside and carry on with the armor plates. I first applied a layer of chippy medium on the areas where I will create scratches and then do some masking for panel separation. The main color for the armor is kind of ashy white, which is not the easiest to work with in this case, especially when it comes to proper weathering, because according to the original concept art, this is war machine for the battlefield. And on the white finish, it's kind of tricky to obtain a good balance between a high-tech robot feel and a beat-up junk. I use a lot of different masking materials like sponge and even stockings to create random textures. I cover it with translucent white and repeat the whole process until I got the rich texture that I'm after. The next steps are highlighting the details around the shoulders and chest areas. I use the masking and wash method to make it simple. The little rough edges will be corrected with a fine brush and it's a good time to paint the detail like cheek armor, eyes, pipes, rivets, and so on. But now the white armor is ready for chipping. I used a fine steep brush along with some sharp tools and water to achieve the fine and crisp scratches. It's fun and addicting, so I work really carefully to not to overdo it, which is really easy to. It takes time, but the final result is really pleasing. A few washes is applied to make the details stand out and give everything a more used feel. Also, it helps to blend all the elements and harmonize the contrast. To enhance the metal textures, old-style dry brushing is still one of the best ways to do it. It is very easy to operate, but always remember, less is more. Here's some close-up shots of the final metal finishes around the ribs area. You may see some random transparent orange and blue hues that are added to make it more interesting and lifelike. It's just a shame that I forgot to film it when I did it, but you got the idea. Okay, now everything is pretty much finished. We just need to install the LEDs and put it on the base. The lights are glued from the back of the face and a quick test to make sure it's all working. And then I just need to assemble and glue everything tightly and nicely. For the base, I used a sugar box that I found in home base. The size is perfect, but I need to fill the sugar lighting engravings 
drill hole for the wires and give it a nice thick layer of black lacquer. The finished box looks really good and the lead is very handy for installing the battery holder. Here I only used some white tack and tape to fix it because I need to separate it again from the base later and ship it away. And now I would say the project is officially finished. Hope you like the new episode. I'm also very pleased to tell you that uh, uh, the crowdfunding campaign of this bust has been fully funded and it's a good success. Uh, I probably will do another version of this bust, maybe with camouflage, I don't know. Anyways, I'll put uh, some information in the description. Like if you like the video, um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.